Hi, I'm Nathan with Rather Be Board Gaming, and I've got a treat today. Growing up, I was a huge fan of G.I. Joe, and I could not believe that I had not heard about this when it first came out. I uh, came across this through uh, the Gray Board Gamer. He did a playthrough of it, and I saw it. Wow, had to have it. Awesome deck building game. Love deck building games. Co op game that's a little different. Uh, a lot of other people don't have, so I can bring something different and new to the table and exciting. And G.I. Joe. Now, no one's thinking, this is not G.I. Joe. No, it's not G.I. Joe. They, they did not get the uh, licensing license for G.I. Joe, but, well, let's open it up and take a look, and you'll see. It's G.I. Joe. Caught this on sale during the Amazon Prime days. Had to grab it then. And with it being co-op, of course, I'll be able to play it solo and I hope to do that soon on the channel and do a scenario on this very excited very excited instruction manual shows you locations of the decks and all that which is cool because I want to show you something that I think is great so let's get this stuff out of the way and this is what they did not have to do. Look at this. Big board. Can't even get it all on camera. I'll have to zoom out. But, and I have it upside down, of course. There we go. Little world map with locations for the decks. That this is like uh, Air Fortress C, Arctic. This is land based, so really cool. I'll get a better picture of that later. Everything's labeled. They did not have to give you a board. They could have just said set these up, have seven locations, blah, blah, blah. No, this makes it seem like a worldwide organization. Now, you can see my insert is beat up. As long as the components are okay, then I don't care because. There's just not much to the game as far as components. Dicing cards. This one is open here, so let's take a look at the thickness, the quality, see what we're getting. And if you watched any of my videos, you know I'm not a fan of black borders on cards, so we'll have to see how much that gets shuffled. And you can see those are kind of thin. So I may have to get some card sleeves for this. And since this is such an awesome concept and something I really want to keep hold of, I probably will keep my cards protected. And here we have some of the bad guy supports, soldiers, vehicles. Uh, Night Stalkers look kind of like the bats, the battle and joy troopers. So... There's pythons or vipers, kind of like elite soldiers. There's the sea serpents or the eels, manta rays. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's see, got Freedom Squad here. Lots of cards. Great graphics. You can see there already getting little nicks which is not a big deal it's on the front but if it got on the back it would mark the card now it's a co-op so it's not as big of a deal but still I want to take care of my games take care of my cards so I can have this for a long time buying some card sleeves even nice expensive ones is a lot cheaper than buying a whole game and easier to get a hold of easier to replace uh, here are some hero snapshot rough house Spectre, so you can see, uh, Top Boss, so you can see they have uh, very reference, like here's Blind Sight, come on, that's Snake Eyes, everybody knows who that is, even looks similar, there you go, so Bowser and Pit instead of Junkyard and Mutt, I mean, come on. There's Bulkhead and Rivet instead of, uh, uh, oh, what was his name? 
the sailor and his parrot friend. There's Caliber instead of Roblox. Clean sweep. So there's Duke, General Steel, Glacier instead of Blizzard or uh, Frostbite or Hardcore. I mean, Hollow Point, Mirage instead of like uh, that could be Lady J or doesn't have the red head of hair. I wouldn't say it was Scarlet, but then you have Nightshade, which is like a blind ninja. So there's Jinx. Phalanx, Power Keg, I mean, come on, this is, instead of uh, Sandbar, instead of uh, Quick Kick, just changed him up a little bit, so yeah, this is really cool, I mean, this is, this is as close to G.I. Joe as you can get without being G.I. Joe, so this should just be more of the same, more units, more uh, reward cards, stuff like that. Let's take a look at the quality of the dice real fast. They have a nice feel to them. Really weird. Really weird. I like the feel. Nice weight, nice size. They're not heavy. They're not, they don't feel heavy. They feel really good. Let's see. Got a few tokens here to punch out. Uh, here are different scenarios. Uh, here's the background story. Here are the different levels of escalation. Here's another one. So that is really cool. Yep. So I'm going to zoom out and take a little more uh, look at the board and stuff. So here's the board spread out locations for all the different decks. This is where you will display the enemies you'll be facing, discard deck. Uh, you have different locations that are being controlled by the Bio Corporation. And then you have several of the cards. I'll get a close up of some of these, but you have a Vipers, uh, Backdraft, Blue Moon. I mean, that looks like kind of like the Baroness right there. So we'll get a close up of those real quick and we'll look at the story of the game. And that'll take care of the unboxing. So thanks for watching. At the end of World War III, in the year 2050, the United Nations made a startling discovery that changed the course of the future. That discovery was the existence of a global organization known only as Venom. It was revealed that they were responsible for every act of war in the past two decades. This includes the start of the war that nearly tore the world apart. Venom's only goal is world domination. Armed with this knowledge, the UN enacted Project Freedom. General Abraham Steele was selected to create and lead Freedom Squadron, an elite task force whose only goal is to stop Venom once and for all. Now, the Freedom Squadron must race against time to uncover Venom's newest plot and failure is not an option. Do you have what it takes to lead Freedom Squadron to victory in Venom Assault?